This video is sponsored by Autolite, manufacturers of high quality spark plugs since 1936. Visit Autolite.com for more information. I live in one of those small town communities where everyone kind of knows each other and will reach out to their neighbors for help before going outside of the area for service work. We have a lot of tradesmen and it's always nice to have someone in your neighborhood that can help with a project, advice, or an unexpected repair. I happen to be the car guy in mine, but I say that loosely as many of us are asked to look at anything and everything with a motor. From cars to lawnmowers, snowblowers to boats, I try and help everyone as much as I can. Recently I was called upon to look at an older Evinrude outboard motor that wouldn't start. After a long winter, these sort of problems are frequent with fuel issues being the number one cause of small engine problems. After verifying fuel wasn't the issue, I needed to figure out what was causing the no start. These engines are relatively simple, and with a little diagnosis, I was able to find and fix the issue with the ignition system in a short fashion. As I was packing away my tools, my neighbor asked me how I was able to figure it out. More specifically, he asked me how these ignition systems work. So let's take a look at this in detail. The ignition system used is a capacitor discharge ignition or CDI system. CDI systems are used for high RPM engines like motorcycles or engines prone to fouling like a two cycle marine engine. The basic system uses the engine's flywheel as both a magneto to generate the initial voltage and a triggering device like the rotor of a distributor. Permanent magnets embedded in the flywheel rotate around stationary source coils, or a stator, creating the initial voltage. Voltage then flows to a capacitor, which builds the electrical charge to about 250 volts. Then a triggering device mounted near the flywheel signals the CDI control unit's transistorized switching device, also known as an ignition control module or power pack for Evinrude, to stop charging the capacitor. At that point, the capacitor discharges the voltage into the coil primary winding. The voltage released occurs much faster than a conventional system, which is beneficial to these smaller high RPM engines. The coil secondary winding steps up the voltage thousands of volts so it can jump the gap at the spark plug, providing the spark that ignites the air fuel mixture inside the combustion chamber. This seems to be a complicated system with all the components functioning as the engine runs, but this system is relatively easy to diagnose and being armed with this knowledge, you can help with many repairs. As for the issue, a defective ignition coil. Replacing the coil got the boat back in the water and I got an open invitation for a little fishing sometime. Sounds like a good trade-off. Thanks for watching.